All right, hello, how's everybody doing? All right, Alfonso. All right, come on, give yourselves a hand. We're gonna get this thing started. The young poets, we have not forgotten you. You will be doing your stuff downstairs while we're having, being served dinner, okay? So know that you have not been forgotten. I am a child and I do children, thank you. Okay, so everybody's all right? Oh yeah. All right, so this is the time where we kind of encourage people to think. It's going to be it's going to be some things put on the table where the goal is to encourage people to think. What I would like to remind the panelists is that we're on a very very limited time schedule. So please don't be offended if I kind of cut you short if you kind of running because we're on a time schedule. All right. So what I like each panelist to do starting from the other end of the table is introduce yourself and then Speak briefly. You have one minute to talk about the relevance of the Emancipation Proclamation today. Again, my name is Alfonso McGriff, and um, anyone that knows me knows I have some thoughts about some things. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to hone in on the Emancipation Proclamation, and we, we hear the word freedom used a lot. And there are some, some understandings of freedom that um, I think we need some clarity on. Because <clears throat> the Emancipation Proclamation kind of allegedly references some freedom that somebody gave us based on their own motives. Thank you, yes. Okay? But the, the, the problem is, for us, from that point on, it seems to me that our understanding of freedom has continued to be defined by that time in which they told us or allegedly allowed us to be free, whether it was two years later, or three years later, or whenever. So if the diameter of our understanding of freedom is limited to how white people have defined for us to be free, and how the Constitution has defined for us to be free, and how every other thing has defined for us to be free, then that means the circumference of our life will always be locked into that race construct. We are a universal people. We're not a race-based people. The, what's sacred about Africa is not that it's called Africa or not the people that are in Africa or the people that came from Africa or the pageantry of Africa, what's sacred about Africa is it just happens to be that land from which a group of people came from that were rooted in universal understandings. The foundation, the foundation of their life was rooted in understanding life, preserving life, and improving the quality of life for all. So, if we continue to operate based on the freedom that was defined by somebody else a hundred and whatever years ago, and, and we're still fighting and struggling for that, hmm. without never having redefined freedom from a universal place. Because when we were in Africa, freedom had nothing to do with white people, <laughs> or what they allowed, or whether they enslaved us or not. So now we get here and freedom gets redefined. So the question I have is, I think one of the challenges for us somewhere along the line, because I have yet to hear anybody talk about it. I heard Martin Luther King mention it one time. He mentioned in a speech and he said that independent of all of this other stuff that's going on, we're gonna have to go inside and define freedom for ourselves. We, we have yet to do that. Now, from what I've seen, we heard the word a lot, but I haven't heard a definition of freedom outside of that diameter and circumference that was set up by the initial alleged freedom of African people in America. So um, I'd just like for y'all, the, the panelists, to kind of tackle that freedom thing in, in any way, form, or fashion that you like. All right. Um, I just want to address that myself before we close out here. Uh, I've been called insane and crazy and um, out of my damn mind 
for my thoughts on this very issue as it relates to are we at war. I have chosen to do everything I can to re reconnect to that universal foundation that we came from. Every indigenous group of people all over the planet, the one consistent thing they left, not just Africa, but everywhere all over the planet, they left information that said there is nothing we have done on this planet that was not connected to the universe. And so that constantly reminds me we're a universal people. So when I think of things like we are at war, this is no slight to anybody's thought process, but this is just me sharing my own. Again, that diameter. If that diameter is defined by somebody else, then the circumference is controlled by who defines it. I don't see us at war. I see every environment I walk into, it could be a room, it could be a country, it could be the universe. Every environment I walk into, I feel like I'm in a forest. It's some foul things in the forest, some things that's going to kill me. It's some wonderful things in the forest. It's some of the most beautiful things in the world in the forest. But if I get stuck on the poison ivy, and then I allow that poison ivy to be my diameter, and then my circumference becomes all that is evolved around the poison ivy, then I'm totally missing the wonders of the forest. I am not at war with anybody. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm understanding that in the forest, it is my responsibility to navigate this thing and understand the dangers of it so that I can move in a way that serves my best interest. Now, when I'm standing in this forest, it's three things that's very important. In any in the forest, anytime I'm in the forest, and that's anywhere, there are three things I need to know. How does this forest work? Now I gotta stand back and check it out, make sure I understand how this thing works. Because I'm going in here, I don't have no choice, I'm in it. The second thing I need to know is what do I want from this forest? What is my mission? What is my goal? What are my objectives? In spite of the lions and tigers and bears and poison ivy and poisonous snakes and rats and cats and everything in there, what is my objective? I'm in it. And number three is how do I go about making this forest and everything it represents serve me? Now, I can go anywhere on the planet, anywhere in the universe. You can drop me in the middle of Taiwan rice fields, and I'm going to take that universal philosophy, and I'm going to go to work. So I know that I'm only at war if I see war, because that's somebody else's stuff. It's no different than when we were talking earlier about this beautiful point you made about uh, what was it? You, we were talking about freedom, and you were talking about equal rights. There is no human on this planet in their right mind who would fight to be equal to anybody for any reason. <laughs> we're all brought into to, to this thing, into this universe, with our own journey and our own mission. And if we're taught to think that we're supposed to be equal to anybody on any level for any reason, we're totally removing ourselves from our own journey. We're withdrawing from our own journey. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but we'll never become whatever that person is on their journey. So we'll be totally lost. So for me, as long as I keep it in a universal realm, that protects me and keeps me on the right path. But as soon as I withdraw from the universe and get involved in all these little boxes that all these little box people create, then I'm going to be focused on the little boxes and be all jacked up and confused and fighting every day. I wasn't born to be mad and fighting every day. I was born to live and experience life. So this, this, is, this is how I see it. But I want to thank you all. We, we, we have to go eat. I want to thank the panelists for participating. Get a panelist a hand, please. I, I, would, I would like to thank the audience. And I would like to bring Sister Nandi up to close this part of the presentation out. Please give her a hand, y'all.